there, Alaskans, wherever you are. Welcome to the Must Read Alaska Show. Coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. This is the place where we talk about, you guessed it, Alaska. Where we keep the mainstream media on their toes and where we are standing up for what's right in a world run by leftists. You can find out more by heading over to mustreadalaska.com and also checking out the Must Read Alaska YouTube channel for some really great content. But first, let's get this party started. Well, welcome everybody to the Must Read Alaska show. You are tuning into a special Saturday edition because I was a complete jerk yesterday and I left our guest today uh, on the hook uh, for being booked, but no host showed up to talk to him. So I appreciate everybody tuning in with us on, on a Saturday uh, morning. We we hope that you're having a fabulous day whether, wherever you are. Uh, where I'm at, it is sunny and a little bit frosty. So we've had a phenomenal week uh, here in Alaska. And uh, we'll hope to have another great week tomorrow, next or next week. Next week, we have a lot of municipal election, borough elections are happening uh, here on the Kenai Peninsula Borough. So I think it's a great time to talk to one of the candidates for the borough assembly. But before I go into that, I want to thank our listeners. If you listen, watch or read and must, must read Alaska and you like what we do, feel free to give us a five star review. If you're listening on Amazon, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, the list goes on. If you listen on any of those platforms, uh, our content is free to you. We don't make you pay for any of our content. And in return, all we ask is that you leave a review every once in a while. And if you do love our stuff and you want to help contribute to the cause, we run on $5 donations, $10 donations, $100 donations at a time. We aren't funded by uh, some huge nonprofit uh, that you know writes us million-dollar checks or some big for-profit that writes us million-dollar checks. We are funded by folks just like you, Everyday Alaskan. So thank you so much. If you are a, a donor to Must Read Alaska, we really, really appreciate it. And you can check out our Must Read Alaska app. If you go to the iTunes store, the Android store on your phone, just type in Must Read Alaska. The app shows up free for you to use. We put a lot of time, money, and resources into that. And we hope you enjoy it. If you do enjoy it, make sure to give us a five-star review. But without further ado, I want to welcome Dill Ewing to the Must Read Alaska show. Welcome, Dill. How are you doing today? Doing good. Thanks for inviting me, and uh, glad to glad to link up there with you. Well, I'm so glad you're here. You are uh, a small business owner. You are the director of the roads department for the Kenai Peninsula Borough. You're a friend of mine, so uh, disclaimer there. And um, I, uh, you are a Bronze Star Medal winner, which I think is a great, a, an awesome thing. I love it when veterans, uh, you know even go a step further and want to give back and uh, with public service. And, and uh, you know, essentially the Kenai Peninsula Borough Assembly is a volunteer role. I think there's like a $500 stipend or something. So I think it's awesome when fo folks like yourself want to continue to give back to the community and uh, do what you do. And so thanks for throwing your name in the hat. Why did you want to run for the Borough Assembly in the first place? You know, that, that's pretty simple. I'm a public servant at heart. and. Uh... I am conservative, uh, and I think all of us, you know, a lot of folks even that start out on the middle of the road, as you get older, you get conservative because you get concerned for our community's future, uh, more importantly for my kids. So I think it's more of a legacy. We want to keep Nikiski strong. We want to make sure that we continue sound, fiscally sound um, policy making um, for the future. I keep saying future and legacy because that's a pretty big deal to me. Um, at my age and being retired army, um, I could just sink off into the woods and go fishing and go hunting and uh, just enjoy my time with my family. But uh, what I want to make sure is that my my kids, you know, I've got kids ranging from 29 years old to six years old. <clears throat> I want to make sure that there's just as good a future for my uh, daughter who's six years old that uh, that I currently have. Uh, since coming to Alaska after retired from the military, um, I've had nothing but blessings everywhere I turn, you know, as far as, you know, starting businesses, it's, you know, my wife and I have three small businesses. We employ, you know, I think we've got 13 employees right now uh, between Soldat Nakinai and uh, Nikiski. And uh, that, that's a blessing. That's something that we can do that we can help out with the community. And I uh, just pray that the, those opportunities are there for my kids, your kids, uh, grandkids, Pretty, pretty simple concept. 
Nice. So tell us real quickly, I know you probably don't like to brag on yourself, but tell the viewers, what does a bronze star mean? You you won the bronze star. I think a lot of folks don't even know what the heck that means. Tell us a little bit about what that means. I mean, it's a, it's an elevated uh, award that uh, most folks don't get. Uh, you typically only get it when you're uh, in a deployed environment. And and honestly, I do play it down because uh, what, what you know, I did my job while I was deployed. That's what I got the bronze star for. And that's what I tell folks. Uh, nice. Actually, it's actually sitting on the wall right behind me. Hold on. I'm yes, I love it. Oh, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, there it is. Um, I proudly display it. That's a big deal. For me, anyway. <laughs> well, I think that's awesome. So um, what are the, you know, let's say we're, you know, a year, year, two, three years from now, and you've won, you know, you're, you won the election, you're into your first year, or maybe second year, third year. What are the, some of the things you hope to accomplish as an assembly person? Um, you know, practical things. We need to protect different structure. Um, obviously, I'm biased to roads because I'm the roads director and been trying to put a lot of good uh, contract changes and trigger point changes in place and just rehabilitation projects versus capital projects so we can repair roads at a less of a cost but still get the you know the same result from. Now that, that's operationally um, things that we do. Once you move up to the uh, the assembly level, you're not going to be dealing with uh, the, the direct operational uh, programs like that, but it would be nice to support, you know, funding infrastructure things to keep the, uh, the, the services and uh, the, the facilities available. Schools are one of them. Um, I, I did a stint as the uh, maintenance interim maintenance director for uh, um, Kenai Peninsula Borough and got to see intimately uh, the condition and the shape of uh, some of our, our schools. There's 42 schools out there. They are, they are lacking in maintenance. And it's not that anyone in the department or anyone didn't do their job. They did the best they could with the resources they had. And uh, they continue to do wonderful things every day. But it'd be really nice to make sure that stays a priority. Um, we happen to have kids going to those schools, uh, you <laughs> and me. So, uh, yeah, you know, the, the, the water that's penetrating the, the, the roof near the front entrance on the Nikiski North Star is an issue. Um, the glaciation and the ice sheet that likes to come off of the back of the Nikiski North Star where the gym is, uh, when you got six feet of overhanging ice because you got a, uh, you know, heat penetrating or heat escaping into the roof, uh, that's a safety issue. Things like that need to be addressed and uh, we need to highlight those items. Um, and, and to as simple as plowing the, plowing the, uh, the driveways so people can get in and out of the schools without falling down. If you think about it, you know, the hustle and bustle you're bringing your you know, if you're taking your your oldest to grade school, then typically the average family's got the uh, the infant on the hip. You know, we don't need to be falling on ice and such. So we need to make sure that those programs are funded and and that we're doing it uh, smart. So you have kids that go to uh, public school here on the Kenai Peninsula Borough, specifically in Nikiski. So do I. Um, would it be a true statement that you want our schools to be successful? Oh, without a doubt, absolutely. Yeah. I think a lot of times conservatives get the uh, raw end of the stick, mostly <clears throat> directed, you know, primarily from uh, union leadership as it relates to public school teacher unions, give conservatives a bad rap for hating schools, wanting the demise of schools, wanting teachers to fail. And I've always been one, especially for Nikiski, we have some phenomenal teachers, we have some phenomenal principals. Even our superintendent is pretty epic, and um, and I think that that makes the left go a little crazy. They're like have a like brain aneurysm. This wait, there's a conservative saying that they like the public schools. This is crazy. Do you find yourself in that bucket of of being a conservative? You have a business. You're fiscally conservative. You can't. You know, you own three businesses. It's tough to own three businesses and be successful without being fiscally conservative, yet at the same time, wanting public schools to succeed. Do you find that to be an anomaly or just kind of how you've been your whole life? I've been my I've been that way my whole life. Um, you know, yeah, I started my military career out in the, the automotive maintenance field. And then as you move up in the upper echelons, you you start taking charge of buildings. And that's your responsibility to maintain and uh, keep those the facilities presentable, workable, safe. Um, so I've just kind of grew up 
you know, through my career is being forced to learn to about life cycles of components of buildings, you know, if a roof has a 20 year life cycle, you know, 20 year life, what can we do to get 30 to 40 out of it? Because um, there's not too many businesses that just have an extra few million dollars laying around. You're always investing it or struggling to pay the bills just depends. Um, so I don't think it's an anomaly for me. Um, I think it's our responsibility, you know, yeah. you know, a public school system and, you know, through taxation, we, we pay, um, to support those. And I think we need to do it fiscally responsibly. And I had, like I said, I had the, the intimate, uh, relationship of being the interim maintenance director. So it was my charge to do that. And it was eye opening for me, you know, some of the things that need to occur and some of the things that are, that we're lacking in, and, and some of them are minor, some of them are major. Um, I helped work with Charlie Pierce to get the Paygo projects going so we could use cash on hand to reduce the scale of a, a project, you know, projects and do a portion of it at a time as we could afford it. Um, that's paramount. Uh, you can't look at the whole picture and say, well, it's going to cost $2 million to do this. If you don't have $2 million, what can you do with a half a million? That's smart. Um, look, at a fee, you know, look at the feasibility of your projects and move forward. And uh, I, I helped put the, 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 the joint committee together, you know, I was in the foundation of that, that we currently have. So um, there is a committee between John Hedges and Tom Nelson, who is that um, John Hedges is the purchasing contracting director. Tom Nelson is uh, the, the uh, maintenance director. And then there's folks from the, the school side of the house, from the school side of the bad building there. And uh, they work together and we get a knowledge sharing program. Every idea is thrown on the table that way. When we go to the assembly and talk about the project, no one's thrown under the bus. Everyone's aware, and uh, nothing's been getting presented at this time that hasn't been shared with the group and approved with the group. So, um, these are joint programs that I help spearhead. Obviously, once I turned the uh, got out of the interim position, Tom Nelson took the lead on that, and I backed out. But uh, it's necessary, and it's things that we're doing to make sure that we're making smart decisions jointly instead of the combative relationship that uh, we've had historically. So you you understand government at least uh, uh, more than a little, I would say, because you're the you've you've been in government. You currently are working as the roads director. You understand small business. You own you own three small successful businesses. You're you're a little our hero, Bronze Star Medal winner. Um, what separates you from your opponent, Jesse Bjorkman, Assemblymember Bjorkman, who's a force to be reckoned with, like it or not, he is a he is a up and coming, very powerful, potentially long term political player in the Alaska uh, scene. He is going to be always well funded by um, the teachers union, endorsed fully by the teachers union, m- mostly uh, behind the scenes, uh, but every uh, middle to middle left teacher is going to be writing checks to this guy. It's very hard to run against somebody like that. That's oftentimes a well-oiled machine. What, uh, what separates you from your opponent? What makes you different? What makes you better? I think at the end of the day, that's kind of what people in, in small towns in Alaska want to hear like, okay, great. You guys both seem like good people. You both have good families. You both are doing your part to give back to the community. Um, what makes you better or different? I won't say better. I'll, I'll say different. Um, and I'll start out by saying Jesse, Jesse's a machine and he's knowledgeable. Um, and he's a public servant as well. If you really look at it, I mean, he's a school teacher. He helped found, uh, and, uh, still, I think still does the, uh, the Hunter education program with the youth. So he's been instrumental or instrumental in, uh, in the Nikiski, um, I'll say footprint for all those reasons. He's a commercial fisherman. Um, I think the biggest difference uh, you may have touched on that um, I'm not getting supported by um, big unions or political lobbyist groups. I don't know who all he's getting supported from, so I can't talk intelligently about that. I do know that he's, he's funded. He's got aspirations um, to get the Senate seat. Um, I have aspirations to be in the voice of uh, a voice of the, the Nikiski. I want to see what our local prob- what our local um, programs are doing. I want to help support the local programs. Um, I was instrumental with the North Road Extension Advisory Task Force. Um, I guess I, I'll just give you some examples of what I did to make sure the people's voice were heard through the Nikiski uh, through the North uh, Road Extension Advisory Task Force. Um, 
that task force was put together to get the opinions of uh, property owners and residents that would be affected by the current North Road Extension project and possibly extending that. Uh, we wanted to hear uh, from a borough standpoint what they wanted. Were there improvements they wanted? Do they want to extend it forward? And uh, simple things. I mean, we obviously we put a panel together, some very uh, good folks from the region. And then we, we, we always, in my department, take it a step forward because you know, you know, I truly want to hear people's opinions. Um, we sent mailers out to every property owner that was uh, in either the Great Cliffs, Moose Pass subdivision, anything past Swanson River and out. If you owned a parcel, um, you, had a, you had a letter sent to you. That letter told you what we were doing, what the task force was charged with doing, and uh, told you we wanted your opinion. Um, on the roads, uh, roads webpage, we put a, uh, a survey together where you could go on digitally, enter your name, parcel number, ask you some few basic questions. Are you in support of or against? And that's the first question you should ask. If you're for or against, why? Uh, where do you live uh, if you don't own property? Because we also wanted to get, because this is going to open up real estate to the back end of the Kenai Wildlife Refuge and other uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife lands. You know, we wanted to hear from folks that said, I don't own property out there, but I hunt out there or I recreate out there, or I work out there with the oil field. You know, we wanted the true voice of the residents there. And it was you know, overwhelmingly everyone, you know, we, we got reports back saying they want the road extended. I think it was about 60, 65, 68% were four. And, and those are ballpark numbers, but simple things like that. Um, things that I do with the roads department, I give my cell phone uh, number out regularly. I meet with folks. Um, I want to hear your concerns. I'm not always going to be able to solve your problem. Some things are so uh, turn out being uh, neighborhood disputes or not financially practical. Um, but uh, if it's within the means and methods of what we can do, that's what we do. So it's just a personal touch. You know, I'm a people nice. person. I want to meet people and talk to them and see what I can do to help. Well, I like the way that you first put it. And your opponent has aspirations to become a senator in Alaska, which is not a bad thing, but that's his aspirations. He's running for U.S. or for, sorry, for state Senate. And simultaneously running for the assembly, you have aspirations to serve Nikiski. And I think that that's a very clear distinction between the two, not saying one's bad, better, or indifferent. It's just uh, a clear distinction. And so one of the things I wanted to ask you, Dill, and then we'll chime off here, um, is is kind of a what, what would you ha would have done question. I know that, um, you know, um, it's sometimes often easy to look back and say, you know, that you would have done something different or I would have done something different, or maybe because we weren't in the situation, we would have, you know, done it better. But I think this is very important for folks in Nikiski because it is a very hot button issue that I would say the majority of the people in Nikiski are not excited that it went down this way. And so about a month ago, timeline probably is, I'm not the best with timeline. So I'll just say about a month ago, um, Tyson Cox introduced a laydown. And so for folks that don't know what a laydown is, it's the extremely last minute agenda item on the assembly um, agenda that I would say most of the time assembly members are not excited about if it's something important, understandably so. It wants that usually laydowns are, I don't know, stuff that's not going to be super controversial or it's, you know, it's maybe something that it's going to be helpful and it's not a big deal. But this laydown in particular was to appoint a mayor to be the interim mayor for the Kenai Peninsula Borough as a laydown. And I would say lots of people, not just conservative people, had an issue with um, Assemblymember Cox putting this as a laydown. It was a very, it was perceived to be um, orchestrated, allegedly orchestrated, it just was did not look good. It did not paint the assembly in a good light. And so your opponent spoke in favor of this. Your opponent um, spoke against delaying this uh, two, two to three weeks to allow for more public comment and more applicants in the pool. And then your opponent voted in favor of installing Mike Navarre as a the interim mayor with very little public comment. So usually if somebody if there's an item on the agenda, people can, you know, phone in weeks in advance and call their assembly person. They can email the clerk or the assembly their public testimony. They can sign up to have public testimony 
at least two times on the agenda item. None of that was available at all with having a lay down like this. There was only one time for public comment and I was on the Zoom and I didn't even, I had, I was like, holy crap, this is actually happening. And I didn't really, it didn't really click to me until it was too late. So, and that's somebody who I follow politics. So I can't imagine for somebody that doesn't follow politics as religiously as I do, they would have no idea what was happening. And so there really was zero public comment, no time to have any sort of other names thrown in the hat. And so what would you have done differently? Your opponent spoke uh, in favor of having um, uh, appointing a mayor as a laydown. Your opponent spoke, your opponent voted against postponing for adding more public comment opportunity for more applicants, and your opponent voted in favor of installing Mike Navarre as the interim mayor. Mayor, um, Is there anything you would have done differently, Dale? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this from two aspects, um, just because uh, Mayor Navarre is my new boss as of today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and again, I don't have, I'll just say this. I think if they would have postponed it two weeks or three weeks or whatever it was, uh, Mike Navarre would have still been the guy that won or, you know, ultimately got the most amount of votes. My issue is not with uh, Mike DeVar. It doesn't have any, Mike DeVar has got a resume, you know, uh, the size of Alaska that shows that he's more than adequate to be an interim mayor for a couple of months. That's not the issue. The issue was for, for me was how it was done. A, appointing a mayor as a lay down is a joke. That's, it, it, it's just should never happen. You need to allow for public process and public comment and other people to apply. Ultimately, they probably would have chosen Mike DeVar and I wouldn't have had an issue with it had they done it the right way. Yeah, from a borough standpoint, uh, standpoint uh, as far as operationally, um, a, a mayor need to do it, be appointed. Um, mayor Navar is fully qualified. He's been there and done that. So it'd be a seamless transition going right into, um, into the budget cycle. I mean, we're literally gonna start presenting budget uh, documents for fiscal year 24 in this next uh, road service here board meeting. Um, so everything that they uh, that that was used in support of Mike Navarre doing the job for a few months was was accurate, and it, it will allow uh, decisions to continue to be made. And uh, for, as a borough stand, as a borough employee, yeah, that you you have a new boss, you you follow suit and you get in line, and your job is to uh, do what the mayor asks you to do and do it responsibly. Um, from a uh, from a uh, voter standpoint, uh, and I, I do believe I even heard uh, Mr. Cox say on a radio show Thursday at 5 p.m. that, or I think it was 5 p.m. that uh, he truly expected it to be uh, postponed. Um, and uh, a lay down for something of that magnitude is way cleaner when you have you know, you know, postpone it, give more time for input. That way, the the public has time to give input. Ultimately, the assembly is the one that makes the decision with the voting. I do believe that it would have went the same way, but um, I think a vote to postpone was uh, was the proper way to to handle that situation in the moment. It, it was a lay down. Uh, we've heard enough uh, enough conversation and uh, I'll say negativity towards last minute lay downs of important situations, and this is one of the the you know, the magnitude of this lay down was uh, pretty. Uh, it, it was at the top of the charts. So I understand that there's a, there's a perceived haste and need to make the decision. I don't think two weeks would have hurt. Yeah, I think it was a, a very immature move on the assembly's part to do this. And a black eye on the assembly's part to do this. And all they would have had it done is um, wait two weeks. Uh, assembly member Dvorkian had an amendment to wait, I believe two weeks, it might have been three or four, but I, I think it was two weeks. And him and Assemblymember Elam voted in favor of it. Um, and your opponent and all the other folks voted against postponing to wait when it was easily postponed. And one of the reasons that they gave was, you know, I don't like it when they throw borough staff under the bus. And the reason one of the reasons they gave was blaming the borough staff for not being able to do it yet. Literally three days later, they call an emergency <laughs> assembly <Yeah>. meeting, <laughs> which is just comical to me. And uh, I don't think it's in good fashion or favor for the assembly to blame borough staff for either ha having a meeting or not having a meeting. Um, I just think that uh, they need to uh, own their decisions and not place blame on on borough staff. It's just in bad taste. So, um, Dill, is there any other last minute things you'd like to say? Uh, before we sign off here. 
Um, you know, I just want to, you know, I'm a down to earth guy. I'm a family guy. I'm a business owner. I'm a, I'm a combat veteran. Um, I want to be the voice of McKiskey. I want to hear your concerns. I want to be able to push, uh, push the, uh, the ideas and concerns and the, the, uh, the, the, the direction that our community wants to go um, as a group, as a whole um, forward. So uh, let me be the voice of community, get out there of the you know, McKiskey community and the Salamantop community, get out there and vote on uh, November 4th. And uh, I would greatly, I'd be honored for your vote. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dill, for joining us. If you live in the Kiski and you are interested in having an assembly person who would have given you a bigger, brighter voice when it comes to the choosing of the interim mayor for the Kenai Peninsula Borough, Dill is your guy. His opponent voted against postponing that and voted in favor of installing a mayor as a laydown. And so Dill would have done that differently. Dill is uh, a small business owner. He is the roads director. And he is a literal hero. He has a bronze star, which I think is awesome. Something you should be proud of, Dill. And I'm glad you hang that on your wall. Um, Dill, if, if folks, my last question that will take off, if folks want to, I know there's only like five days left or three days or something like that, but if they want to get involved in your campaign, they got a question for you. How can they email or you or call you um, with questions or concerns about uh, your campaign or what you want to do? Uh, you can send me an email to uh, um, vote for number four, Dill at gmail.com so vote for number that's the number four and dill is d-i-l at gmail.com or you can call my cell phone 907-513-1938 awesome well thank you so much dill thanks for joining us until next time i'm john quick from somewhere in alaska